Hi, it is October 29th or 30th, 30th. Um, finally got my eggs in today. They've been, they're very, very late and I wasn't very happy about that. So, post office is not my good books right now because apparently they forgot to put the express stickers all over the box. So I paid for express, but it never actually came in express. It came in regular mail, which took a week. I'm really glad it didn't take longer because a week is about as long as these little eggs have. So I'm going to show them to you. Um, my incubator that I built is still awaiting a decent thermostat. So my dear lovely mother sent me my commercial one that works like a hot dam. So all these little dudes are Japanese quail eggs and I've put them in the turner and I just attached it to this little mechanism down here. I'm going to give it a pull, see how the eggs roll, and then they roll back. And then they roll back, and they roll back. As long as they get turned, well, ideally more is better. Um, at least three times a day, if not more. They will do just fine. And these little trays here are where the water goes into. I can pour that in. This is the unit that sits on top. It's got a fan, thermostat and a heat coil instead of light bulbs. So these guys take 17 days to hatch. I'm not too sure how good a hatch is going to come out of these since these eggs are a little bit on the old side now. Um, but we'll try it. Yeah, I've These little birds are so tough um, it wouldn't be the first time they've completely surprised me by outdoing them themselves. So we're going to try these ones, and I might order some more, just in case these ones don't work out. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it works out. So it is November the 4th today, and I've got my all my incubator parts in and put together, and I'm going to show them to you. So this little doodad actually ordered two of these, because I'm smart enough now to order two, because I usually blow up the first one. No such luck this time. So this little guy here um, is the GQF wafer thermostats that you find in the Hub Invader. Uh, this is a spare one that I got. The other one um, I've just put inside my incubator unit here and it works pretty darn good. Uh, it's very sensitive. There we go. The lights come on. They come on and they turn off every couple of seconds. And we're holding really, really good temperature. i got two thermometers in there just in case one of them isn't working and one of them definitely does show a higher reading than the other one and then I've got my electronic one here it says 102.2 but and it gives you a minimum and a maximum but I think that's a little bit high I don't trust this thing very much um, but I've just turned it down a second before I started this film so yeah right now the mercury is showing 102 and it should be a little bit less than 100 uh, but I'll play with it over the next day or two and get it to, uh, to the right, exactly the right temperature that I want it at. So this is essentially the finished product. Um, I took the turner out, that wooden turner, I don't even know where I put it. Oh, there it is. Um, I don't really like that thing anymore, actually. I think I've made it a little bit, uh, the rungs a little bit too close together. The eggs don't turn in it very well. And I think a few of them got cracked. Uh, doing that so I just basically took it out and here's my little Rolex eggs have been cooking in here for five days I'll just open it up a tad so you can take a peek at them um, I don't like this because I got to stick my hand in there and open this up three times a day and I lose a little bit of heat and humidity every time I do that um, nothing too drastic I mean all the in other incubators that I've had over the years never had turners and I used to have to put my hand in there and just give them a roll and I got great hatches. Um, never really bothered it. But if I can get away from that, I will, because every little inconsistency just... Um, it's not really that great for them. But, I mean, in the wild, a hen has to get off her nest once in a while. So that's kind of what I'm emulating. So I just did um, a bit of candling. I didn't do all of the eggs. I just did a few. Um, but I'm definitely seeing vasculature at day five of incubation. So I'm, I'm quite excited about that because I was worried that these little eggs would be no good after being lost in the mail for seven days. 
But it looks like we're going to get some birds after all. So I'm just going to keep them in here because I know this keeps a steady temperature. And until I get this one working and adjusted exactly the way I want it, they're going to stay in here. And the only way I can really uh, turn the eggs without a turner in there is to open it up just like so. Put your hand in. Ideally it doesn't do that. Give them a quick roll and then put that lid back on. Um, you don't want to have the lid off um, for very long. Certainly not more than a few seconds because you want as the least amount of heat and humidity to escape as possible. But you can see it's already still holding heat even though I opened up the door. Um, all, like I said, all the other homemade incubators I've had over the years worked on the same principle. Nothing fancy. You open the door, you give the eggs a quick turn with your hand, and then that's it. Um, and they all work just fine. So this is what I'm hoping to stick with and uh, keep the eggs in here. And then I'm going to move them over to this guy when it's ready. And when the eggs are just about ready to hatch, I'm going to pack it over to the Animal Health Technology building in my car and uh, let them hatch in the classroom so everyone can watch. So that's, uh, that's them. Um, I'm quite actually happy. And I think that this unit, if you actually were able to um, find a lot of these parts uh, second hand for cheap really free I mean you could probably do this for a lot less money than I had to spend because well I didn't really have much to go on here I, I mean at home I've got sheds full of random stuff that I probably could have put this together with but I had to buy everything here since this tiny little messy, terribly messy dorm room is only 9 feet by 12 feet and this is what I live in every day. <laughs> so I don't have exactly have room for a tool shed. Um, but other than that, the project is going ahead and hopefully uh, about the 16th of November is when I'm hoping to get some chicks and I'll be hatching those guys and uh, watching them and getting them on film for you to watch as well and uh, then we're going to be using the birds uh, once they get old enough um, teaching the class um, some restraint and handling techniques I really like using Japanese quail uh, for that kind of thing because they're so nice and docile like they don't really bite or kick or scratch or fly or do any of those things that people are generally afraid of when it comes to handling birds. So they make, they're, they're really nice to get people's confidence up. Um, and we'll be hoping to do a bunch of operant conditioning uh, with some of these birds because they are really, really responsive to food and easy to train. So at least that's what they say. So we're going to give it a shot. I think it'll be fun.